Hello friends, welcome back once again to another new video. This is Lipsa again with you. So in this video, we will learn about a tool which help us to avoid writing a large amount of boilerplate code in multi-layered application. Okay. So you know in multi-layered applications, data is usually represented differently at different layers. Okay. We often require to map between different object models like entities and DTOs. So when we convert entities to DTO or DTOs to entities, it's a tedious tax also or error prone tax, isn't it? So, uh, okay, so let me walk you through a code where you can better understand this problem while mapping different entities in real time applications. Okay, so let me open my Spring Boot workspace. So see, so this is a project Spring Boot with REST API. So it is a REST API application. Okay. So inside this application, I have different uh, packages like C controller. Inside this controller, I have a employee controller and I have a DTO data transfer object. Okay. Employee DTO I have. Then I have like model. Inside this model package, I have the employee entity. Okay. Then I have a repository, employee repository and a service employee service okay so inside this controller package i have the employee controller class where i have written certain rest endpoints okay to save employee to fetch a particular employee to delete an employee to fetch the list of employees as well as to update a particular employee clear so this is my controller okay so if you mark here while i am saving a employee i passed in the request body employee dto employee dto is nothing but your data transfer object i mean this is used to bind whatever value comes from the client side in this class okay so here if i go to this employee dto class then you can see here you have the employee id employee name address email and age so anything comes from the client side it will be come with this field employee name address email and age okay and if you mark here this employee entity this is the employee entity if I go there, so this is, is used to save the employee data in your database. This is nothing but our entity or model class. Okay. So this is used to save the employee object in database. So here you can see employee ID, employee name, email, age and address. So this field is required to save the data against this employee. Clear so far? So where is the problem then? Why are you discussing about this employee DTO and employee? So see here. So this is the same method of employee. Inside this employee service, I have the save employee method which accepts this employee DTO. Whatever data comes from the client, we save this in our database. Okay. And return this employee object. Clear? So let me go to that save employee method. Okay. So this is the interface save employee. Let me go to the implementation class of this interface. So see here. This save employee methods accepts employee DTO. Clear? So, whatever value comes from the client side, it will bind to this class. Okay, but the return type of this save employee method is what? Employee entity. So, we will save the data in the employee entity class and return that employee entity. Employee entity. Okay, so see here, while doing this, I paste the, all the record from this employee DTO and set it to employee object. This employee object, save it in my DB. Okay. So don't you think it is a tedious task? I mean, I have to retrieve all the data from this employee DTO, get employee DTO dot employee ID, then employee name, email, age, address, all those things, then set it to employee entity class. So if you have thousand of records or, or from the client side, you have thousand of records. And are you going to get all the value from this employee DTO and set it to this employee entity field to save it to your database? So there might be a fair chance to miss some field or you may set in age, you may set on any other field. Okay. Or in address, you may fill any other field from the client. Isn't it? So it is a very tedious task and a error prone tax as well. Okay. Similarly, if I go to another method, let me show you that one. See here. So, to fetch all the employee list. If I check this one, then I, I need to find all the employee object from the database. Then I need to iterate this employee object. Again, from this database object, I need to 
convert it to the DTO object. Okay. I will get all the value from the database object and set it to the employee DTO object. Okay. At this case also, there might be a chance that we will set any uh, wrong value to, to a field or any field may be missed at the time of setting. Okay. So, imagine this is only one entity we are talking about, employee. In your multi-layer application, there are so many bins are there. Then how difficult uh, and tedious it is to map between the object models at this class. Okay. So, to avoid this scenario, we have a brilliant mapping tools known as MapStruct. So, in this video series, we will learn deeply about this MapStruct. Okay. So, so, please follow all the videos of this series. I am sure you will definitely get rid of writing so many boilerplate code on your application. Clear. So that's it for today's video. I mean, we know what is the real time problem while mapping between the entities. Okay. So solution for it is nothing but map struct. So in my next video, we will learn more about map struct. What is map struct? How we will use it to mapping different entities and how it solve our real life problem actually. Okay. So I will share everything in my consecutive videos and we will see by using a Spring Boot application how we can add the dependencies of MapStruct in a Spring Boot application and use it to map different entities. So, hope you like this video. Please stay tuned to know more about MapStruct. Thanks for watching. Thank you.